Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today, you're going to hear some construction trucks, but you're also going to see some work from Baker Mayfield. And I think the construction trucks kind of match what we look at with quarterback prospects at the college level. They are players under construction. And we're going to look at some positives from Mayfield's game on this one play. And we're also going to look at some things that he has to work on and how his fit with a specific system in the NFL could mitigate his development issues and speed up his development time or at least his productivity early on as he continues to develop as a quarterback. So let's get started. We're going to watch this one play. You had a two-by-one set where then the tight end motions to the wing. You get some read option with a fake here. He looks to the right side, and I think he sees right here that the that the receiver is probably going to be breaking outside and the defender has position over the top there. It doesn't like that, so he cycles back to the outside and then settles on his seam route with this fullback working up the seam and delivers a nice pass 31 yards downfield in stride on a line drive trajectory for the score. So that's good. Let's break down what's good about it in even more detail. And part of it, again, is reading the position of the defenders and cycling through progressions. You've got a good play fake there. It's believable in the fact that he's looking down, but he's still scanning the defense to look at the right side, his first read. Full motion of that play fake. He looks to the right, and like we showed earlier, the defender has position with the receiver breaking to the outside. He's over top, and he's facing that outside. That quick tell right there is an indicator for the quarterback to move on to the next progression. So he does that. You watch him pivot. And he had pivot, and we're going to look at it one more time. Let's see. We'll watch him pivot right here. And that pivot you're going to see is going to this outside route at the left sideline. The defender is also facing the sideline. He's, he's side by side with the receiver. It's pretty tight to the sideline. That's going to be a tough throw to make if it's even a wise one in the first place. So once again, second read, good job. So then he turns back. And he sees his third read. And look at the position of that third read. This is the fullback working up the seam. They're cousins, by the way, these two, full, these two players who are on each other right now, which is kind of fun to see. But the fullback's cousin is facing the inside of the field. So he's not even covering this route in terms of being in optimal position to cover the break that's working outside of him. So the fact that he's work, looking more to the inside a throw here is going to be a, an optimal position because this defender will have to turn around and catch up to a receiver who's already working downfield. The only thing that Mayfield wants to wait on here is that they're so close to each other, he wants to make sure that this, this isn't a collision and the fullback falls down. And in, in fact, it's the defensive back who stumbles, and so then Mayfield delivers the ball, and it's an easy throw, easy catch, easy touchdown, in terms of that target there. So the cycling through was very nice. The fact that he can see the defender's positions and know that which route's going to break open is very good. Where he needs to improve is his footwork. And while it didn't result in any inaccuracies on this particular play, when you're projecting to the pro game, you want to look at certain techniques and understand that there are going to be situations where the same type of techniques are going to be applied in different situations that could lead to breakdowns and accuracy. Um, and you're going to see it here. You, you get the drop back here with kind of a two-step drop from shotgun. And the stance isn't too wide here because he looked off. He was looking to his right. When he flips to his left, the stance gets a little bit wider. And then when he comes back to the slot, it's even wider. This is a very wide stance for a quarterback to make. And trying to throw off a wide stance can lead to throws that sail over the target. They also can lack velocity. Now, on this particular this particular target and this throw, it's fine. It's well within his range as an arm thrower without having to use his legs. I mean, he uses it somewhat, but you can see that he doesn't get that full motion when that begins to when he begins that release it's not a full body use of his hips there a lot of it's the arm talent here and because of that 
he's all right with being able to hit this within this range. But what if this is a throw opposite hash or a timing route like a comeback to, you know, to the opposite sideline or opposite flat or a deep out, you know, or a deep dig for that matter, and he was turning through. You're going to see some issues where maybe the ball sails a little bit more in the deeper stretches or having to get the ball outside a little bit more. And that's going to be in part to the footwork and his inability to really keep a stance at shoulder width so that he can get the most velocity and control with the throw. Now, in this offense, it, it's not really a, a concern on this particular play because it's just a straight line seam throw. But in a, say, a West Coast offense where he's got to drop three steps, five steps, seven steps, and pivot through in a tight pocket and hit a, a timing route that's matched with it like the ones I described that require more power, he's going to have some issues here if he doesn't shore up that footwork. A player who's had these issues is one who was very well versed in the West Coast offense when he arrived in Philadelphia, and that's Carson Wentz. And his feet oftentimes wound up in awkward positions or two wide positions after he pivoted from one pro one progression to the next. And he often was inaccurate last year. One of the things that the Eagles did to change that is that they used more spread concepts this year so that he can just flip into position and throw. And even when he does have to drop back and his position gets wide from switching from read to read he's also getting rid of the ball fast and he's getting rid of it in a shallower area instead of trying to hit some of these throws you know 40 50 yards downfield or opposite hash throws and in, in areas where he's going to need to have his footwork more balanced he's able to flick the ball you know 25 to 35 yards using mostly his arm and not having to rely so much on clean technique with his lower body and that's probably where Baker Mayfield's going to match up well at first. If he can get selected by a team that want, is going to use more spread concepts like what they're doing in Philadelphia right now, then you're going to see some early success. If he's asked to do what they're doing in Cleveland, which is you know more three-step, five-step, seven-step, West Coast-oriented, old-school drops, he may struggle if he can't get his footwork shored up early on. So that's just... Uh, you know, a drop in the bucket of things that we could talk about with Baker Mayfield. He's certainly an interesting prospect, and there's going to be a lot more that we can talk about with him coming soon. You can check out more of my RSP Boiler Room videos at my YouTube channel, the RSP Film Room, and my blog, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.